All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we have once again another tropical disturbance to talk about, and this one could become a tropical depression or even a tropical storm. We're gonna talk about all of that in this video. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what do you think is going to happen with this tropical disturbance? How intense do you think it's going to get? And let me know in the comments down below. I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now let's get into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at our sea surface temperatures anomaly. Now, keep in mind, we're still in the month of May. So it's very important that we have above average sea sea surface temperatures in order for a storm to be able to develop. Because in normal circumstances, a storm would not be able to develop. Our storm is currently located over Florida, and it's going to move off the east coast of the southeast coast. And as you can see, if you look at that region, we do have some oranges and reds indicating areas of well above average sea surface temperatures. And this is why there is a chance that this one develops into a tropical depression or tropical storm because there's abnormal conditions there. So that's why we're going to have the abnormal chance for a second May tropical depression or tropical storm to develop here. Very unusual to have two of these. We're already getting off to a hot start with the tropical season and already we're eyeballing a chance for a Gulf storm in June. I'll be making a video about that probably within the coming days. Now we're about to move on and what we're going to do is we're going to move on to NOAA's two-day outlook for this one and their five-day outlook and then we're going to start getting into our modeled guidance. All right, now here we go. Here's our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And I have to mention, I don't really agree with their probabilities at this point. I think they're well too low. And I do expect that we will see us get into the orange range, that 40 to 60% chance very shortly with this one that is lo located over Florida. If it moves offshore like a lot of the models are showing, it has a very good chance of at least becoming a tropical depression and a pretty good shot at becoming a tropical storm in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and move on to the five day graphical tropical weather outlook and you can see they are calling for it to move offshore of Florida and impact some areas there offshore of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. I don't think they're taking this one as far east as I expect it to go. I expect it to go on the far eastern side of their yellow region there and then probably move northward, directly northward, maybe make impact with northern South Carolina or Southern North Carolina there, and then just move very far and very quickly northward, bringing lots of rain, minimal wind to a lot of regions there. By that point, I don't think it will be a tropical storm or anything like that. I think it'll be a heavy area of rain uh, with some gusty winds as it moves northward inland, and I think it's going to bring a lot of rain to Virginia, Pennsylvania, and possibly even New York State as well. I'll be talking all about that later on. Now, we're about to move on, and we're going to get into that modeled guidance like I said before. We're going to take a look at our European model's probabilities of a tropical depression and also their probabilities of a tropical storm, which are very high, actually. As you can see, here's their probabilities for a tropical depression, and in that little orange and red area... That's where we're at a 70 to 90% chance. That deeper red area just south of South Carolina, that little region, that's where they have 80 to 90% chance of this one becoming at least a tropical depression. And once I saw this this morning, that's when I knew I had to make a video about this because there is a good chance that this one becomes a tropical storm or tropical depression. I'm not saying that it will for sure happen. There are a lot of scenarios where that does not occur, but this, this model is certainly hopping on board the probability that this one does develop at least into a depression. Let's look at those tropical storm probabilities as well. And in that orange shade there, that's where we're at about a 60 to 70% chance on this model, uh, which is also a better chance than not. So we're, we are looking at the chance for this one to develop over the next couple of days. Within the next three days, the, both of these were for the next uh, three days. So Tuesday through Friday, Tuesday's today, by the way, uh, through Friday. So we do have a really good chance of this one developing at least into a tropical depression and possibly into a tropical storm over the next three days. And I, like I said before, I do expect Noah to hop on board with higher probabilities in probably within today, actually, uh, if not tomorrow. All right. Now we're going to take a look at our GFS model here. And we're taking a look at our first frame of simulated radar. And this is going to be for uh, this morning, actually. And you can see there is some heavier areas of showers offshore. Some of those making their way onshore of Florida. Not really looking at too many gusty winds yet. 
but we're about to move on. We're going to watch this one move northward where we're really going to begin to see it impact a lot of the mid-Atlantic states. All right, and here we are at about tomorrow at maybe 2 a.m. So this one's going to move very quickly from offshore of Florida towards uh, the Carolinas within, within 24 hours there. And you can see that it is developing a center of low pressure there, and it is developing heavier showers within there. That's probably by point it would be a tropical depression. Now, the GFS model does have this one developing like the European model did. However, there are some models that have this one very quickly moving on shore to South Carolina, which would really limit the chance for it to develop any further because it would move on shore way too quickly. But if it stays offshore like this model is showing, that would be the scenario where we would see this one likely develop at least into a tropical depression. As we move forward here towards Thursday at about 2 a.m., you can see that this one does eventually make its way on shore to southern North Carolina and through North Carolina into Virginia with heavier showers. Again, by this point, it wouldn't have a lot of wind, but this one would bring an inch or two of rain to North Carolina and Virginia, which I think are major implications, obviously, especially uh, that far north in areas that don't usually anticipate those kinds of conditions. As we move forward again towards about 8 a.m. on Thursday, you can see Maryland, West Virginia, and even Pennsylvania get involved with these heavier showers. And then by the time we're making our way to about 8 p.m. on Thursday, you can see it becomes much lighter, and we really just see widespread showers as it kind of mixes with uh, the rest of the precipitation around. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the total rainfall from that model. And you can see it does have widespread blues and some pinks scattered in there. The blues would be half an inch to two inches of rain, which again, I think are pretty major implications there. And then we do see some pinks make their way on shore and even purples for Southern North Carolina. That would be two to six inches of rain, potentially closer to four to five to six inches in those deeper areas, making their way just on shore to North Carolina. Uh, and then I do see a streak through Virginia, uh, West Virginia, Maryland, and possibly making their way into Pennsylvania there, where we saw the heaviest showers as that moves northward. And again, that's about two to maybe three or four inches there. So again, very major implications, probably not a tropical depression or storm by this point, but it would be our tropical disturbance making its way up, and it would cause some major rainfall if this scenario was to occur. All right, now here was the peak winds from this model run, and you can see that it does have 32 to 36 knot winds, which is just on the border of being a tropical storm status, so we would it would really be a close call if this scenario was to occur, but it would definitely be a tropical depression at least, bordering on tropical storm like I said before. All right, now we're about to move on and quickly take a look at what our NAM model has to say as far as wind and then rainfall, and then we'll also take a look at our official forecast for this storm at the end of this video. All right, and here we are with our NAM model. Here is, as the, as of this morning, like I said before, already this one has about 20 to 28 knot winds. I don't even think we have those out there. Keep in mind the NAM does like to overdo things sometimes. That's why I showed the GFS at first. Uh, and here we go. Uh, this is the scenario where it doesn't intensify quite as much. Like I said, it likes to overdo things, but obviously it is going to lose, it is going to use logic still. So when we do see this one move onshore faster, we see less implications. Uh, here's by about this afternoon. Let's go ahead and move it towards this evening, and it already has it developing into a tropical storm at about 36 knots, maybe a little more, uh, and then it has it move on shore of South Carolina. Like I said, it overdoes things, but this track would actually probably mean a weaker storm, even though the NAM likes to think that it might be a stronger storm. Uh, it does have it move on shore very quickly to South Carolina, which would mean a lot of rain for you guys, uh, but really we wouldn't see it develop as far because it wouldn't have as much time in those warm waters off the southeast coast, so it wouldn't be able to develop as much as the GFS says. So let's go ahead and take a look at the total rainfall there on the NAM model, and you can see the blues, again, indicating areas of half an inch to two inches, but we do see those pinks move on shore to South Carolina and North Carolina, even a little bit of Florida as well, which is, again, areas of about two to four inches of rain, which would be major implications from this one, and uh, both of the models so far do have major implications as far as rainfall. Quickly, let's look at our Canadian model as well, and it doesn't have those pinks moving on shore, but it does have very widespread blues for the coastal regions of North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, D.C. Um, obviously, they don't have coasts, but the coastal areas of North Carolina and South Carolina and Virginia, and then kind of inland towards Northern Virginia, D.C., Maryland, 
in then eastern Pennsylvania, maybe western uh, New Jersey, and even into southern New England there. So this one keeps it more along the east coast, whereas the GFS took it more inland, uh, giving implications more towards West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania. This one likes to keep it much further east. All right. Now for our official forecast for this one, our official forecast track, uh, I have it moving offshore immediately because all of the models have that happening. I do have it possibly if it was to take the more westerly track moving onshore to South Carolina. But the very middle of the track, I think, is the most likely, which is southern North Carolina through more inland in Virginia and then up into Pennsylvania, where obviously it wouldn't be a tropical disturbance by that point, but it would have major uh, rainfall involved with it, and it would be a storm of some sort. Uh, but if it does take that easterly track, expect coastal North Carolina, coastal Virginia, and maybe even the Delmarva in New Jersey to get more impacted than if it was that more inland track. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you expect this summer to go? And Pac-Man's army said hot. And well, that pretty much says it all. I do agree that it probably will be hot for most areas this summer. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.